Memorial Day, I, I, uh, that week I went up to uh, Boone, North Carolina, and I took a four-day workshop with Cheap Joe. Carol, can you guys cut the talk over there? Carol, Carol. I took a four-day workshop with Cheap Joe. Now, I don't know, most of you probably know Cheap Joe's art supplies. Well, Joe Miller is the owner of that, and he also does a lot of other things involving art. He's uh, quite an artist himself. He's a signature member of the American Watercolor Society, which is the cream de la creme of all watercolorists. And uh, he has a whole army of artists <laughs> that he does workshops, sets up workshops for them all over the countryside. I've taken from two of their two of his artists in Canuga workshops. So it was quite an honor to be able to go to his workshop and uh, it was extremely enjoyable for me. I, uh, excuse me. Maybe put down your pocket, the bottom pocket. Oh. Watercolor? Yes. Cool. Yeah, uh, Joe Miller does watercolor. Yeah. <coughs> See if we can get this away from Mike. Yeah, Joe Miller does watercolor. He's uh, very good at it, and he's an excellent instructor and very funny. Funny man. I just uh, enjoyed every day there. Uh, but here are all the workshops that his artists do all over the country. So you might want to look at that if you're interested. Uh, I learned a new technique under Joe, one I'd never heard of before. And actually it's a very old technique. It was used by Turner, uh, Winslow Homer, and a lot of the great watercolors. This is a demo I did for the Largo Art Association about a month ago using that, that technique that I'm going to show you today. The paintings you see in the front also use that same technique. Here's a, I don't know if I can get that close enough. Here's a, the class that was at Ch Joe's. Yeah, I don't know if I can get it. Okay, not a very good picture, but it's a pretty big class. Yeah, we'll have it on the table if anyone wants to look at it later. Yeah, and I think, I think what's amazed, what amazed me and everybody here is that about half of them are male. <laughs> It's unusual for an art class uh, these days. This is all information. This is Joe's palette, which he handed out. I don't know if you can see that. But. This was an idea that he gave us on making cutouts of things like birds, which is what I have here. And you can actually take the acetate, put it on a finished art piece, take a scrubber and water, scrubber brush. That's a scrubber brush. It's very stiff. A little bit of water, and you can take it and scrub out some paint, get your paper white again, and paint on, paint on that paint the details ups, of the bird on that finished piece. I did two of those here. One is this bird up in the sky. That was added after I completed the painting. And then the other one is this pelican over on the post using that technique. I like it. It's fun, you can add a little more excitement into the painting after it's done. Yeah. <clears throat> he asked us to bring paintings and have them critique it. I took this one to him and uh, told him I was unhappy with it. Loved the bird, but I didn't like 
what I've done with everything else, especially the water. He said, well, why don't you soften this up because the lines are a little crisp, so I used some water and softened it up. Tried to scrub out the water, no way. <laughs> it was not going to scrub out. So, I told him I, I would do a new one using his technique. And I don't know which one it is here, but it's, a, it's the same bird, but I simplified. Simplified. I told Joe, I said, you know, lately I've been getting so much in my paintings, it's like everything but the kitchen sink. And I look again, and damn, there's a kitchen sink. <laughs> so I need to simplify, and that's my attempt at simplifying that painting. So. I think it's a lot stronger. <clears throat> I bought I bought uh, plastic templates from Joe. These are actually plastic, so you can put them on your paintings and see what it looks like with a mat. You have to wait like like this dirty and wet then. You know. This is one we did in his class. I did in his class. And it's uh, done with that technique I'm going to show you very shortly. Notice that oh, smooth you get your areas. Uh, now you can do it with dry paper. You can do it with wet and wet. But this is different and it's so much more forgiving. When you take when you take one of those workshops, do you work from everybody works on the same picture or do you bring your it own? It depends on the workshop. Okay. With Joe, yeah, we did. We uh, we actually uh, did the same things that he had demonstrated. He showed us how to buy his cardstock, <laughs> his envelopes, <laughs> create our own cards. This is one Joe did and gave to me. So. I was glad I gave him one of my cardstocks. He gave us three to work from, and now I have two left. But I have a Joe Miller original. So, I like these a lot. I just wanted to show you. And you can buy them at Cheap Joe's. It's good when you want to lay out, to lay out your pictures that you can yeah. not worry about getting paint on it. <laughs> this would be like a half sheet mat, half sheet of watercolor. And then this is like a quarter sheet frame. What, what uh, brand of watercolor did you use? I'm sorry, what brand? What brand? What did you use? I use Mission Gold. Mission Gold. But for Joe's uh, shop, I bought American Journey. <laughs> These are ones that he recommended we have for his class. Are, are they richer in color or more dense in their color or what? Why did he recommend them? Uh, he, he was going to demonstrate using those colors in his palette. Oh, I see. Thought we, if he wanted to replicate, we could use the same colors. Besides, it's like a hundred and some dollars worth of tubes, so he made another another hundred dollars on me. <laughs> Have you ever used Dr. Martin dyes? No, haven't. Okay, they're they're really vibrant colors. They're like a, almost an and then you add the water to them. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. No, I haven't used them. Um, the technique I'm going to show you is uh, totally saturating the water, or the paper with water, front and back. This will take about 10 minutes, probably. You cannot get it too wet.
all the new members know that we we are taping this demonstration and it will be posted on YouTube. So you can watch it from home and work from there. Or if you can't make a meeting, you can always look it up. Is that 300 pounds paper, Jim? Is that what? Is that 300? No. If it was 300, it would probably take 20 minutes. Oh. <laughs> and clipping it to the gator board is just enough. So, 140 of them? Is it about 140, Jim? 140 pounds. I, I hope. I don't think it's 300. <laughs> this is a lot faster way to put on the water than with just a brush alone. How many paintings did you just do from the workshop? How many, How many did home? I do? How many did you bring home with you? Three. Was that here at Dunning? Oh, North Carolina? No, this is in Boone, North Carolina. Oh, okay. Is that a three-day workshop? It was four days. Four days. Yeah. It would have been five, but it was over uh, Memorial Day week, so we didn't have that day. I don't recall exactly what I paid. I think it was a $600 something for the four days. Plus all your materials he wanted you to buy. What? Plus all the materials he had you buy. Well, that was another hundred. And then when I was there, I spent another hundred. Did that include your hotel room, your accommodation? Uh, hotel room was a good deal because Joe had worked out an arrangement with the hotel. I think it was $75 a night for the, my wife and I. So that's not bad. Yeah. Did you try his paper? Did I buy the... Did you try it? Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. Oh, Kilimanjaro? Yeah, I did. Actually, I have already purchased some. Uh, Chicho has his own paper manufacturing company called Kilimanjaro. Oh, really? Yeah. It's a top of the line, high quality, professional paper, like Arches, Fabriano. I can't think of the others right the moment. Now, the one thing about it is if you, if you want to have your drawing, you have to put it on before you start this process. <laughs> you, see, you cannot draw on wet paper, believe me. <laughs> it won't work. You draw it on with pencil? Huh? What do you draw it on with? I use a, just a normal uh, HB number two pencil. And it's still there, you get that, huh? Ooh, well, trash. It's still there, yep. It doesn't go anywhere. Picked up some trash somewhere. so much water. Two sheets here.
Yeah. Joe said it's okay to make mistakes, which I just did, as long as you learn by them. And, uh, because that, that just makes you better. Everybody's going to make mistakes. But you need to remember them and learn by them. Joe used to live close to his close to his uh, facility there, um, just down the road, not far apart. And uh, the facility is amazing. It's uh, the workshop area. It's not as big as this room, but comes close. Maybe from this to there is that it's a it's a big area. He has tables for everybody, drafting tables, and uh, they have another area in that room where they serve lunch, and the lunches are fantastic. Oftentimes they're build your own sandwich from uh, really good, really good stuff. So Jim, how many minutes do you, are you doing, do you wet it that many times? Yeah, you keep wetting it until you get it saturated. Now, I'm kind of having to do, do the back twice here because I got it. I didn't get it the first time. What did Joe say um, about how you know when it's properly saturated? Uh, well, I'll show you very quickly. I think it's pretty close. We'll turn it around and face front. Get it flat. Now. Acting pretty good. Once it's no longer wrinkled, you're ready to rock and roll with it. I got a little wrinkly edge here. Is it wet? Takes out the wrinkles. Get wet. Can you keep getting it wet? Takes out the wrinkles. You get it. Keep getting it wet <laughs> until you don't, you don't have any wrinkles. As soon as the wrinkles are gone, then you can begin the process. Now, by saturating the, the, the paper like this, it'll stay wet, damp, for over two hours in normal conditions. If you're out in the sun, that, not, that wouldn't be the case. Or if you're under a fan, it'd be shorter. But normal conditions, you can do it for about two hours. And the first sign of it drying out will be the corners curling up, like, you know, curling up like that. Oh, this is the hard part. I also bought this gator board when I was there. Gator board's really nice, it stays very stiff. Uh, and it's like three quarter inch thick. You can staple the paper right to the gator board if you want before it dries and it will stretch it tighter. Okay, as soon as I get my wrinkles out It's, it's plastic. It's like foam core, but it's a much more rigid foam. Doesn't warp. Doesn't warp. That's, that's a big advantage. Could you use masonite? Get yeah, you can use any surface that you want. Uh, masonite's heavier, and 
it's more prone to warping underwater, although it's not it's fairly water resistant. But I like this because it's lightweight. I think we're good to go. We see a little bit of wrinkle there. And that's a matter of just coming and adding more water. Okay. I think I'm satisfied that it's saturated. Now, Viva paper towels. Viva has no texture. Oh, okay. It has So we're going to put the paper towel on top of this wet paper. And another layer. Jimmy Denier, have you ever soaked your paper in the bath She was asking. Do I ever what? Have you ever soaked your paper in the bathtub? Yes. First watercolor class I had, that's what we had to do. Is to soak the watercolor paper. How do you have it in a workshop? How do you have to have a bathtub there? <laughs> and uh, then we stretched it on a, a wooden frame, like you would a canvas frame. And then uh, we let it dry after stapling it on there. And it would get like a, a drum, literally. I made a tom-tom out of it. But this is different. You're saturating your paper and you could do it in a bathtub to start with. But now I'm blotting out the extra water. And I'm working from center out to edge. So, the idea is to get rid of any excess water that you might have laying around. And then, for future use, just let those dry out. Now we're down to the point where Crystal Beach, uh, there was a sailboat coming up on shore as a Hobie. A couple people on the boat taking the sails down. So I've got that sketched on here, and some rocks in the beach. Um, the pier, there's a big long pier out there, fishing pier. So I'm going to start with a large brush. I'm going to do the typical background, middle ground, foreground, OK? <laughs> I'll go with the large shapes first and work to the smaller shapes. That's tr tr traditional watercolor. So, I'm going to get some cerulean blue. Here's a, one of the first things you learn in watercolor is when you get your paint mixed up on your palette or in your brush, before you put it on the paper, you dip the tip of it on a, on a pad. And this happens to be a roll of toilet paper with some Viva towels on it. Another thing Joe showed us, which I'd seen before, but. So now we're good to go. I don't know if I got enough water or not. But, um, oh yes, yeah, that's fine. 
And what what is really cool about this is, my opinion is uh, the softness of this. You know, it's really a soft, soft edge that you get. If I were doing this with saturated or water sitting here, it would be wet and wet. If I were doing it dry, I wouldn't get these uh, soft edges. So it's an, and I don't have to worry about stopping and starting. I stopped here. Okay. It'll blend right in because the paper's all damp and you don't get hard edges. Even when you stop for a little ways. I'm got my blue. You can come back in while it's still damp and darken it. You could take lighten it with paper, paper towel. sale, but I did a little bit more than masked, but I did a little bit. <clears throat> Let's add a little cobalt to that cerulean. Now, um, while I'm up in the sky, let's add, uh, get all the brushes here. Um, I'll go with this, this one right here. I'm going to add a little yellow ochre to the clouds. Where do we go here? Jim, do you ever use brisket when you work wet on wet like that? When you what? You use brisket at white out. Sometimes, like if you wanted to block out the bird. Oh, if you're going to use frisket, liquid frisket, you would do it before, well before you wet the paper. Because it's water soluble. Liquid frisket is water soluble. If you ever need to thin it down, you can add water to it. And it'll flow really easy. Uh, let's see. Well, I'll just use a little of this. Use a just a yellow deep here. Getting a little blue in that. Don't really want blue.
Now, if you get it right up to, this yellow goes right up next to the blue. If it gets in the blue, it'll actually climb into that blue and make a green. So I'm trying not to do that. And we'll get a little gray on the other side. Wait, before I do that, no. I've got another cloud here. strong I think. I just want a slight indication of just bottom side shadow side. So much for the clouds, huh? 